Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the palette knife Photoshop action. So the way the action works is that you open up your photo within Photoshop, you run the action and it will transform your photos into this effect. Okay, now I'll put a link down to this photo below, so if you want you can download that and follow along. Uh, in the next example, I'll open up this photo. Again, I'll put a link down to this one below, I'll run the action and I'll recreate this. Right now, I'll just show you a few more examples and we'll jump into Photoshop. All right, so here I am in Photoshop and I have my photo open here. Now, before we run the action, just need to make sure that your file is all set up correctly. So firstly, go to image mode and make sure you're working in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel. Next, just check the size of your photo. Always best to work with a high, res a high resolution photo. So you can see the size of mine here, 3500 by 2100. Uh, I'd recommend anything over 2,000 pixels high or wide uh, for this action. Okay, so I'll click OK here. Next, what you need to do is hit B on the keyboard or select the brush tool here. Right click anywhere over your photo. And what we need to do is load up the brushes that were included in the download. So if you just click on this icon and go to load brushes and navigate to the palette knife underscore brushes file. Double click on that and they will appear just down the bottom here. These few down the bottom here. All right. Now, when you've loaded up the brushes, just check that the brush opacity is at 100% and these two icons are turned off. That's very important, they're turned off. All right, next what we need to do is hit Y on the keyboard or over here, select the Art History Brush Tool, not the History Brush Tool, the Art History Brush Tool. And just make sure that your settings match mine on top here. So firstly, mode is set to normal, opacity 100%. Make sure these two icons are turned off. Style is set to tight medium. So just click on that, just make sure tight medium is selected. Area, 80 pixels. And tolerance, 0%. All right. So that's done. What we need to do now is load up the action panel. So go to window, actions, and it will pop up to the side here or you click on this play icon. Now what we need to do is load up the actions. So if you click on this icon and go down to load actions and select the palette knife action file. And here it is here. So when you've loaded up the action, it will come in this folder here called palette knife by seven styles. So if you 12 open that folder, you've got the actions here, but the only one you want to play is this one here, palette knife. I've just set this up as a, as a divider uh, just to remind you not to touch these ones here. I've got them back, so don't touch. So this is the only one you need to play. You also cannot rename this folder, okay, because it will break the action. So just keep that how it is. And I've noticed over the years, a lot of people um, tend to select the folder and they, say, they, they wonder why they can't play the action. It's because you can see if you select the folder and you hover over the play button, you can't, it won't work. So just make sure you have the palette knife action selected so then the play button is active. Okay, so all I need to do now is click play. All right, now during the action playback, there's gonna be seven steps, uh, which will just guide you through to the completion of the effect. Okay, and what you can see it's doing now, it's just starting to brush over your uh, photo. Okay, and in a few moments, it's gonna allow us to, um, the action will stop and it will allow us to brush over areas of our photo where we want to really increase the detail. So with this action, you can kind of brush over where you want um, the focal points to be and everything else you can leave um, a little bit distorted to create more of an abstract look. Okay, so I'll fast forward the view a bit to get to, the, to that first stage. Okay, so the first message will pop up and it just says step one, brush on detail. Now I won't bother about reading all this. Um, I'll just talk to you about what you need to do, but this is just a reminder um, of what you need to do. All right, so step one, brush on detail. So what you need to do here is click on stop, okay? And what you'll notice is that the action stopped and nothing's happening. So what we need to do here is start brushing over our photo where we want to increase the detail. 
So you can see that we have quite this, uh, we have this rough painted look, but what you'll notice is as soon as you start clicking and brushing, it increases the detail. All right, so you can see I'm brushing down here on the boat. Okay, through these crates here, these people here. I'll just minimize this action panel for a second while I'm brushing. All right, so focus on brushing only over the areas that you want to, um, you know, your focal points, all right? So you can see these people out to the left. I'm not so, so much interested in those people. It's these people through the middle here, okay? Now, if you hit the left square bracket on the keyboard, all right, that will decrease the size of the brush. And what that'll allow you to do, if you look up the top here, all right, the size of the brush is 10. Now, if I use the left square bracket, that gets smaller. And what that allows me to do is, say if I brush over this lady's face here, okay? And if I decrease the size of my brush to say three, you can see how much more realistic it starts to look. So you can brush on a lot of realism in areas that you want to. Now, to de de decrease the realism, you hit the right square bracket, okay? And what you'll see is that the brush size starts to go up. Okay, now if I bring this up to say 20 and start brushing, see how much it distorts them? Okay, so by default, when the action stops, it's set to 10, all right? And that allows you to brush on some nice detail. But if you want that extra bit of detail, just decrease the size of the brush with the left square bracket, and it will allow you to do that, okay? All right, so when you're happy with um, the areas that you brushed, all you need to do is twirl open the actions panel if you've minimized it. And all you need to do is click play on the action and that will resume it, okay? So in a few moments now, we'll get the next um, pop-up message. And here it is here. It says step two, select palette knife texture. So all you need to do here is click continue and navigate to the textures folder that was included in the download, all right? And when you open up that folder, you'll see we've got a series of textures here. Now, in this second step, the ones that you're interested in are these palette knife textures. The canvas texture will have to import um, at a different stage, but at the moment, it's just these palette knife textures. Now, if you're on a PC and uh, you want to view these textures before importing them, what you can do is just right click and just open them. Okay, so here it is here. And I can just use the, um, the right arrow on the keyboard to scroll through the textures. Okay, so this is where you can experiment with um, different textures to see what outcomes you get. Uh, but this, for this uh, photo, I'll just use texture one, which is this one here. So I'll close the preview down. So I know that's palette knife texture one. So I'll double click on that. And what you'll see now is that the uh, texture has come into Photoshop, but nothing else is happening. So Photoshop is waiting for us to confirm the placement of the texture, all right? So you can see if I start clicking around the texture, I can rotate it. But what I wanna do is cover up my entire photo, okay? So that's what you need to do here. So I need to zoom out for starters. So if you hit Control or Command minus, you can zoom out, all right? So I can see everything. Now I need to rotate this texture around, all right? So you can just rotate that. If you hold down Shift while you're rotating, it snaps to 15 degree angles. All right, now I need to scale this up. Now to scale uniformly, you hold down Shift Alt or Shift Option and click on those corners and drag up, okay? Now you don't need to, you can have it much bigger. You can scale it up that big, um, but at least it needs to cover your photo. All right, so I'm gonna zoom back in, Control Plus. All right, so that's done. I just need to hit Enter on the keyboard and that confirms the placement of the texture. Now, in this next step, Step three, it says to save the Photoshop document. So all you need to do here is click continue and save it. So where's my partner file here? So you can save this anywhere on your computer um, and you can call it anything. So I can just call it anything I like, click on save, okay? And then we get to this next window. It says step four, reopen Photoshop document, okay? So all you need to do here is click continue Click OK on this window, and then reopen the, the Photoshop file that you just saved, which was this one here. All right, so that's all you need to do for that step, okay? And the action will continue to play back now. I'll fast forward the view a bit to get to the next pop-up message. Okay, so the next step, step five, is to import the canvas texture. So uh, just click continue here, 
And again, navigate into your textures folder and just select the canvas texture. And just like before, Photoshop waits for you to con confirm the placement. So I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to scale up the canvas texture over my photo. Just like that. And I'll zoom back in. All right, and I'm going to hit enter. Then the action will continue on to the next step. I'll fast forward it to get to that part. Okay, so we're up to step six here, and it says adjust palette knife texture influence stage one. So this this step's very simple. All you need to, you need to do is click continue, right? And you get this fade message uh, window pop up. All right. Now all you need to do here is drag this handle to the left, and what that will do is increase the visibility of that texture over your photo. Now, with all the testing I've done, you only really need to probably stick between a range of 90 to 100%. Let's see what happens when you go a little bit further. Um, so I'm just going to stick around 90% with this photo. And all you need to do is when you've adjusted that, is click uh, OK. And then you get to the last step, which says adjust palette knife texture influence stage 2. So it's just the same step as before, um, but this one will affect a photo in a slightly different way and it will differ photo by photo so uh, you can see it's not doing much on this photo but others it will uh, so I'll just keep that around 90% I'll click OK and then the action will now um, complete in a few moments alright and it's done so I'm just going to minimize the actions panel here alright so let's now jump into the layer panel here so at the top here, you can see that the palette knife folder is selected. So if you just minimize the folder, you can see the setup here. So if you turn this folder off, okay, you can see the before and after. Okay, and also take notice of that step where I brushed on that extra detail, that first step. You can see that I applied most of the detail around the center of the photo here. And you can see these people out to the left, how abstract they look. It's because I didn't apply any detail at all. So that's just a good example of that first step and the importance of brushing on where you want the focal points to be. All right, so let's go inside the folder here and I'm just going to uh, minimize these layers with the effects, sorry, collapse these effects. So you can just click on these arrows here. All right, so everything's a bit neater. Okay, so if you want to run the action again, all you need to do is delete the palette knife folder. Delete open up the actions panel, select the palette knife action, and then click play. So that's all you need to do uh, to run it again. I'll undo that. So let's go inside and we'll, we'll go down from the top, okay? So the first layer here is called overall sharpening and I've got in brackets opacity. Now if you look down the layer uh, order here, you can see there's a lot of layers that have opacity. And all that's telling you to do is to experiment with the layer through its opacity here. Alright, so there's, there's a couple of ways you can um, change the opacity. Firstly, you can just click on the word opacity here. Click, hold and drag to the left and right. And that will increase the visibility of that layer. Okay. So you can see this is the sharpening layer. If I drag it to 0%, okay, if you look at the photo and then 100%, you can see how it really brings out a lot of the texture details. So by default, that's at 80%. <coughs> Excuse me, that's 80%. If you feel your photo is too sharp, just um, adjust that. Or if you hit the numbers on the keyboard, that will also change the opacity. Okay, so I'm just hitting 6 for 60%, 7. Okay. <clears throat> so this layer below is called Use Original Photo Colors. Okay, and again, in, I've got in brackets opacity. So by default, I've only applied 5% of the original photo colors over the design. Okay, now if I turn up to 100%, you can see that it removes a lot of the um, color vibrancy out of the photo, and that applies the true colors of your photo over uh, your design. Okay, so you can adjust that. This one here is just a quick way to quickly adjust the overall brightness of your photo. So if you just double click and adjust these three handles here, okay, you can, you can drag this one in uh, from the left to the right, which will sort of Give a lot more contrast. This one into the left will make it much brighter. Okay, but I found that you only really need to adjust these just a little bit, if um, if at all. Okay, so that's there to play around with. Next is the highlights brightness control. So if you double click on this, okay, you can play around with this brightness controller, 
and that will specifically target the brighter areas in your photo. So you can sort of turn that way up if you want to. You can see how this uh, this tarp here is becoming much brighter, and you look at all the whites, all the brighter areas are getting much brighter. The darks not so much. If you look at this window here, okay. So play around with that. Uh, by default, I've just taken out a lot of the contrast in the whites. Um, you can turn that back up if you want. This layer here, under painting, by default this is turned off. Uh, if you turn that on, what that does, it just, I've, that very first step of where you brush on that extra detail, I've just put that on its own layer. So if you drag this to the top here, okay, uh, you can see, you can use a much more basic version of the effect if you want without um, any of those textures applied. Okay, so if you want that effect, you can just work with that. I've kept that hanging around. Um, but if not, it was turned off. Okay, so that one's there. Uh, what, it, what you can also do is you'll notice that every folder, and every layer um, that I create with the actions, I always put on a mask. And that allows you to control the visibility of that, of that layer. Okay, so by default, you can see here that the, white, that the mask is white. So if I turn it on, um, the mask is, is, if it's white, it's visible. If it's black, it's going to be hidden. So if I just select the mask and hit Control or Command I to invert that mask, it hides the layer. Okay, I'll invert it again. So you can see that there. So if you're looking around the photo and you decide that you want to reduce some of the texture amount in some areas, what you do is select the mask, hit B, okay, and by default I've selected um, the soft brush for you after the action's complete. So you can just use the left and right square brackets to adjust your brush size. And if you brush white onto the mask, so you can see currently black is my active color. If I hit X, it'll flip it to white. And you can see as I start brushing around here, that's starting to remove a lot of the texture, okay? Now, if you feel that that's too strong, okay, the blend between the textured area and the non-textured area is too obvious, what you can do is double click on this mask and reduce the density. So if I, uh, well sorry, the feather amount. If I drag it up to the right, keep increasing it, you see it start to sm smooth it out. Okay, so you can use that to adjust, adjust that. Another way to do it is if you select the mask and go to image adjustment levels, you can drag this handle here to the left to make the mask darker. So if you, if you look at the mask here while I'm, I'm dragging this to the left, you can see it's becoming darker. To the right, becomes brighter. Okay. So moving along, we've got these three layers here uh, called Vibrancy Booster 1, 2, and 3, and all got embraced opacity. Okay. So if you want to add a lot more color vibrancy into your design, just increase the opacity here. So you can see I'll drag that to 100 to exaggerate it a bit. There it is there. By default, it's at 20. If you want to remove some of the vibrancy, just drag it up to zero. Okay, these work in slightly different ways, so you can um, just play around with that. So you see that one there really focuses more on adding um, vibrancy into the brighter areas, um, the brighter color range uh, of your photo. Uh, this one here, again, it's original photo color. I just found that sometimes when I ran the action, um, some of the colors um, weren't quite right. So what this one does here, sort of just balanced out. It's not having any effect on the photo here, but some I just found that I needed to add this layer here. It's the same one as this one here, use original photo colors. Um, but by default, I've set this to 100% here. So you can turn that one on and off to see how the colors change on your photo, okay? Uh, this layer here, flatten color tones. Again, I've got a break opacity. By default, it's at zero percent. Now, if I click on opacity and start dragging that to the right, what you'll see is it starts to flatten out um, or even out all the color tones. You can see that happening there. And I just found that using this at a lower opacity sometimes, um, I kind of preferred the look. But that's a case by case basis with what photo you use. You just need to experiment and see uh, what you like better. So next up, we've got this layer here: extra texture height in bracket opacity. Now this layer um, is a very subtle effect. It actually might not have any effect in this photo. I'll turn it to 100%. No, it doesn't. 
Um, basically, what the way this layer works is that it, it looks for the brighter, the stronger hues, color hues in your photo, and will apply an extra bit of texture height to it. Okay, so that's again that will differ photo by photo. By default, it's at at fifty percent. You can turn it to one hundred percent to see what impact it has over your uh, photo. All right. So moving on down here, we've got these two layers in yellow called Palette Knife Texture Visibility 1 and 2. Now these layers here um, were part of um, two steps. Those, those two steps where the fade window came up and you had to drag that handle to the left. Well, these, that step influences these two layers here. Okay. So this first one here, you can see that the mask is hidden it quite a bit. And that, that mask is dependent on what level you set that fade slider to, what percentage, okay? If you set that slider to 0%, this mask would be white, 100% would be completely black, okay? So you can see, if I go inside this mask by holding down Alt option, we have a deep gray, because we applied just 90%, I think, by memory of that first fade window. But basically, if you want to redo those steps, all you need to do is hold down Shift and click on that mask, and you'll see that a big red X appears to it. So now we've hidden it. So now what we can do is we can adjust the opacity of this layer. Okay, so I'll drag this back to zero, and we can redo that fade step manually here. So I can just start increasing that opacity up, and that will increase the, um, the visibility of that texture over your design. You can also experiment with changing blend modes as well. You can see this layer here is set to divide. All right, you can try other blend modes, say overlay or something like that, and then drag it back to zero, the opacity, and then start increasing the opacity that way. And you can see that it has a different effect, okay? So by default, it was set at divide, okay? And, but you can play around with that blend mode. So that's just the same with this one here below. Uh, this one's actually set to normal. So if I hold this mask, hide this mask in by uh, clicking shift, you can see there's the texture there. So I can drag that back to 0% opacity and then start increasing the opacity there. Again, you can play around with the opacity, uh, sorry, the blend mode of that layer, so sort of see what results you can come up with. So these two layers here, this one's called increase, uh, I've got text, so it's meant to be texture, so increase texture visibility in light areas opacity and increase texture visibility in dark areas. So what this does, it looks for uh, the whites in your photo, and if you increase the texture, if you increase the opacity of this layer, so you can see by default it's at 10%, if I just turn up to 100%, what it does, it applies the texture into the brighter areas of your photo, but you don't want to use it at 100%, you just want to um, increase the opacity a little bit, so that you are happy uh, with the result. And in most cases you won't need to do that, but um, some photos you might want to increase the texture visibility in the, in the white areas. So that's the opposite with this one below. <clears throat> it's just targeting the dark areas. So if we look at this window here to the left, I'll turn this up to 100%. Okay, so you can see I have to put texture into that area. You can see on his pants here. So again, you just use this very subtly, put that back to zero, and I'll start increasing the opacity. So you can see the texture coming on. All right. But I'll bring that back maybe to about, I'll leave it there at 15%. So these four layers here in purple, texture, edge, emboss one to four, I'll turn these all off, okay? All this does, it just adds a little bit of uh, extra height to the texture, okay? Um, so you can just turn those off if you don't want them, or turn it on. You can also put this up to the very top of the layer order, and it will just, it's very subtle to see there, but it will add just a tiny little bit more height to the texture, okay? These two layers here, texture contrast one and two, again, in, in brackets opacity. Uh, so play around with the opacity of these two layers, okay? Again, it differs photo by photo how much it influences it. Uh, this one here, bring that to zero, 100, okay? So some you, you might prefer at 100, others, you know, at zero. So just play around, I'm just gonna leave that about 70%, okay? Uh, this layer here, bump texture, it's very, very subtle. Um, it's just add a little bit of a bumpy texture if you zoom right in, um, just to help give a little bit 
uh, more realism to the effect. So this layer here is the canvas texture. This was the one that you imported in one of those steps during the action playback. By default, I've got it turned off, okay? So if you want to apply the canvas texture, just turn it on, all right? And if you zoom out, Control or Command minus and hit Control or Command T, you can scale the texture up, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna zoom right in here. Okay, right here. So by default, the canvas texture is at 40%. If I turn it up to 100%, you can see the texture comes through there. So by default, it's very subtle. You can turn that up. And if I zoom out, control zero is to fit your photo um, to screen. So if I zoom out, then I can scale it up again to create a much larger canvas texture. So I'll zoom back in here. So you can see it's a lot larger there. Okay. Um, so let's turn, turn down that opacity a bit. I'll leave the canvas texture on. This layer here, shadow lightness, opacity. So if you want to brighten up the darker areas of your photo, you just adjust the opacity here, okay? So if you run the action and there's areas that are too black or you just want to bring a little bit of brightness into it, just adjust this. And most of the time, you only need to use this a very um, on a very low amount but just experiment and see what you like. Uh, this last layer here, texture displacement. If you turn this one off, okay, off and on. So what this layer looks to do is that step where we needed to save out the Photoshop file and reopen it, that was the displacement step. That's where it takes the, the original look of our underpainting here. Oops, I'll just hide that. Our original look there and it looks to offset all of, the, um, all of the details in that underpainting to match the texture that we imported, okay? So that's that layer there. So you want to keep that on all the time, but I've just added it there just in case, you know, if you turn it off and you want to remove some displacement from the area, you can brush black onto the mask to hide that displacement. All right, so that's all the layers and how they affect the design. So as you can see, it's very simple to use. And most of the time you won't need to adjust these layers, but they're there to play around with if you want. So let's take a look at the before and after. So there's the original photo and there's the palette knife result. So what I'm gonna do now is open up the next example and I'm just gonna go through the motions of setting it up and running through all those steps in the action, um, just so that you get really familiar with how it works. All right, so the first thing I need to do here is just twirl open the actions panel. Okay, I need to select the palette knife action and click play. And again, that, what's that, what that is going to do is start brushing over our photo. Um, and I'll fast forward the video and get to the point where we can um, brush on those extra details. Okay, so here's the first step to brush on the detail. So what I need to do here is click stop or hit enter and start brushing where we want to add some extra detail in. Okay. So let's brush a little bit there and that will do all right so it's going to click play now to resume the action and the next step will be to import the palette knife texture so let's wait for that message to show up here it is here so i just hit enter and navigate to the textures folder uh, again if you want to preview the textures right click and go open now this is for that's on a pc i'm not sure on a mac but um yeah just click on open if you want to preview okay I'll close that and i'm just going to select uh, number two this time Double click, and we need to scale the texture over the photo. So I'm gonna rotate it, and then scale it up. Okay, let's go a little bit bigger maybe. Okay, hit enter, and we get to that step where we need to save the file, so let's hit enter again. And you can overwrite, each time we run the action, you don't need to create a different file to save. You can keep overriding the, the previous one. So in the previous example, I called it ASDF. I'll just double click on that to override it. Okay. And then I hit enter, enter, and then reopen it. All right. And now I'll fast forward the video and get to the import canvas step. All right. So here's the step to import the canvas texture. So I'll just hit enter, navigate to the textures folder and select the canvas texture. I'm going to zoom out and scale that up over my photo. Zoom back in and I'll hit enter to confirm the placement and then the action will resume. 
Now the next step will be to adjust that fade slider, which will adjust the um, texture influence over our photo. So I'll just wait for that step to come up. All right, here it is here. Uh, just palette knife texture influence stage one. So I'll just hit enter. And I'll just see how this affects the design when I drag to the left. So you can see that's looking pretty cool. You can see the texture coming on. Uh, looks really nice through here. All right, so I'm going to leave that at 80%. I'm going to hit enter, enter to get to the next one. And I might, leave, I might, you don't need to use, um, you don't need to adjust it if you don't want to. So just remember that. Uh, I'm not going to use any here, so I'm just going to hit enter. And then the action will resume and finish up in a moment. Okay, and there it is there. So I'm going to minimize the action here. Okay, minimize the action panel. And now a quick way to um, collapse all these FX on these layers that are open, if you just select the master folder here, which will already be selected when you run the action, hold down Control, Alt, or Command Option and click on the folder arrow, then release the keys and then twirl open the folder again, and those are all collapsed. So looking at my result here, I'm actually really happy with that. I don't think I need to change anything. Uh, if anything, I might jump to the Vibrancy Booster one layer here and just increase that a bit and see what that looks like. Bring it back to zero. Maybe use about 45%. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to compare this against the original now. So here's the original photo and here's the palette knife result. All right, guys, so that's it. That covers all the layers um, and how to set up your file and go through those steps during the action playback. Uh, as you can see, it's very simple. You just need to make sure that um, your file is set up correctly at the beginning, especially uh, the art history brush tool here, making sure your settings are the same as mine. Uh, you've loaded up the brushes that were in the download and your opacity is at 100%. Okay, uh, I'll put a link down again to these photos below. So if you want, you can download those and follow along or you can just use your own photos. Um, I'll also put a link down to the, my support page below. So if you run into, into any issues, check out that support page and then contact me um, and I'll do my best to get in touch with you as fast as I can. Um, I also put a link down to some other recommended actions below. Um, I have over 100 of these kind of effects now, so make sure to check out uh, my collection because there might be others that you uh, might find handy. Uh, but if not, have a good time using this action and I'll see you soon.